Most of us are aware of just how polarized, how divided our nation is at the moment, how divided Western civilization is, to the point people are at seriously talking about the potential for civil war. Okay, and I've been thinking about this and just trying to understand it and wrap my head around what's going on, what are the issues, what are the sides, and how might this play out? Okay, and today I finally understand it. I finally see what's going on. I finally know what the issues are. I know how this is going to play out. The only thing I'm not sure of is the time frame. Okay, when's it going to kick off and how long is it going to last? But I know who's going to win. Okay, the sides. Right now it's good versus evil. It really is that simple. Okay, and who's going to win? It's going to be the Christians. They're on the side of good. Okay, and I know a lot of you that don't, couldn't care less about Christianity, think I'm nuts. I say, okay, that's fine. All right, but you're the ones that need to hear this because something good this way is coming. And it's not going to be good for you. Okay, and I don't mean Christians are going to attack you or hurt you or harm you in any way whatsoever. It's not what's going to happen. What's going to happen is the Christians are going to leave. They're going to leave your communities. They're going to leave your cities and they're going to leave your states. Okay, this is something that confuses a lot of people. Good, good and evil, and a lot of people say, well, you know, if God exists, how could he let evil exist? Okay, well, God doesn't let evil exist. What evil is, is the absence of God. Hell. That's what hell is. Hell, God doesn't send you to hell. You choose to go there. There are people that do not want to be near God. They do not, do not want to be near good. So they choose the alternative. Well, if there is no good where you're at, then you're in hell. Okay, if there's no good left in your cities and in your states and your nations, you are in hell while the good people are leaving. And what made me finally realize this is I, I watched a podcast. It was John Lovell of the Warrior Poet Society and Nick Ferritas, and they were discussing a lot of issues, a lot of current social issues and Christianity, and their wives were there. And they were talking about the homesteading movement and how many good people, how many Christian people were coming together, how many Christian people were get, getting more and more into homeschooling, all right, because they're not trusting the government to educate their kids anymore. They've, Christians are waking up and they're coming together. All right, and I've seen this in other places. I've seen it locally. I'm seeing it with my friends. We're starting to discuss this and we're coming together more and more. Okay, well, as, we come, as Christians come together, which is a powerful thing and I'm excited to see it, we're leaving other places. All right, well, when we leave those other places, and there are a lot of really good, well-meaning liberals out there that are not Christians. Okay, I, I, I believe that, I respect them. I like them, I would call them friends. The problem is they do not have the moral convictions that it's gonna to take to stand up to what's coming. So they're gonna be left in those cities where the good has left. They're gonna be left in hell. Okay, and what's coming is the communist revolution for those cities. Okay. And all you got to do is look at any of the past communist revolutions if you want to see how this is going to play out. The complete authoritarian takeover of those cities, those states, they're going to try it with the country. But it's not going to work with us Christians because the Christians that are coming together now actually believe the Bible. Okay, and this is something that bothered me. It's with churches for a little while, I've seen participation in church declining. Okay, but I realized today that's actually a good thing because the people that are left in the churches now are true believers. And the, 30 years ago, at least in my little small town in the southeast, it was just socially expected for you to go to church. You didn't even have to believe what was being said and you could just sit there and 
listen to the preacher, nod your head. It's just you had to make the appearance. Okay, it was expected. All right, those people aren't in church now. Okay, that's actually a good thing. The people in church now believe the Bible. They're reading their Bibles. They're trying to follow in the example of Christ. They're serious. Okay, and I talked before about the need for us Christians to become stronger mentally, physically, and spiritually. I'm seeing that with the ones that are left. Okay, so when the communists take over, the authoritarians, whatever you want to call it, the neo-Marxists, whatever. All right, first of all, their biggest threat to make you comply with whatever they're telling you you're going to have to do and your freedoms they're going to take away is they're going to make life not comfortable for you. They're going to take away your comfort. Okay, well, us Christians, us serious believers, we're okay with that. <laughs> okay, so that's when I, when I heard John Lovell and Nick Ferritas talking about the homesteading movement. These are people that are they're becoming more self-reliant, just like doing a lot of things I've been talking about, becoming more self-reliant. Okay, I'm not, as, I'm not gonna be as dependent upon the creature comforts, and I'm getting stronger and I've been working hard. Okay, I'm getting in shape. Okay, that's a powerful thing when you've got a man that doesn't mind working, that doesn't mind being uncomfortable. Okay, so, us Christians that are coming together now with that mindset and that attitude, we're going to be okay. Our L.A., when they were cutting people's power off or violating COVID policies while the governor of the state was having parties. Okay, those people were terribly uncomfortable without power. Okay, people have been going without power for thousands of years, most, almost the entirety of human history. We didn't have power and we were okay. Our ancestors did just fine. Okay, the Christians that are left now understand that. And they'll be okay with that power for however long. Okay, and it is convenience. I like my comforts, but I have no problem giving them up. And that's what I'm seeing with the other Christians now. So those of you that aren't Christians, if you're well-meaning liberal, I mean, that's fine. I, I, hey, I'm supporting you in your fight if you stay in the cities and so forth. Um, I hope you put up a good fight. I don't think you're going to beat the communists, though. I don't think your friends are going to have your back because they're going to be worried about themselves not being comfortable. Okay, and then eventually that whole movement's going to burn itself out just like communism always does or always has. What's going to be left is just a bunch of smoldering rubble and a lot of bodies because that's what's happened in absolutely every communist revolution there's been. Is the, the body count has been absolutely unreal, be it the Russians or the Soviets, the communists, or the cultural revolution under Mao. I'm, we're talking tens of millions of people here dead. It's coming here. It's where this is heading. We have incompetence running our institutions right now in the country. Corruption. Right, things are going to cease to work or work properly. I mean, if you don't mind the power grid not functioning and things like that. Inflation, your money's not going to be worth anything. We're all experiencing the inflation right now. That's from the government just printing too much money. All right. They didn't fix anything because of corruption. No politician wants to lose their job, so they got to just kick the can down the road for future generations, and we're about out of road now. So there's just all sorts of things converging at this moment in time. And it's going to be bad for a while, and I don't know when it's going to start. I don't know how long it's going to last. It's, it could be 100 years. But what I am sure of, is when it's over, the Christians are going to be standing. That's it. We're going to be the last ones standing. And everybody else will we'll pick up the pieces of what's left. And as Christians, we don't want to see that happen to anybody. We're going to try to help all that we can. I'm, 
That's part of our duty as Christians to try to help others. But if we can't stop what this is, what's coming. You're choosing this. If you live in a liberal city right now, you're voting for this. And I hate it for you. I really do. Okay. That's, I just really needed to share that because it had been stressful for me for a while because I've been seeing something coming and I just couldn't figure out what it was or how it was going to play out or any of the details. And then today I think God revealed to me exactly what's happening. And that's it. And my tip for any of you, that's, if you believe there's anything to what I'm saying, go find a church, a good one of people that believe truly believe. Go plant a garden. Start getting ready to be more self-sufficient. Oh, and I said before that whenever I show the house again, I should have a floor on the new addition. Well, I've got a floor, and I'm proud of that floor. It's solid, it's strong, it's flat, and it's square. It's going to be a good floor, something solid to build the rest of the addition on top of. And we're going to talk about this some more next time. God bless and have a great day.